Mile zero on the Alaska Yukon Highway, Hyder, Alaska. Uh, the Stuart Cassiar Highway begins there and goes north, up, connects with the Alcan. Some of the scenery was just fabulous. I mean, it was a trip of a lifetime. This is my son standing on the U.S. Canada border at Hyder, Alaska, southernmost point in Alaska. On the building, U.S. property, do not injure. Hyder, Alaska, you've, lots of you have seen pictures that, just like this. I mean, what an iconic scene. It was just, just out of this world. It's just a small town. Had the best fish and chips we had on the whole trip. They may have been a little expensive, but you notice they had a sign, Welcome home, Mike. <laughs> they were waiting for a friend they hadn't seen in 21 or 22 years, so yeah, I took advantage of it. Uh, we even made a new friends while we were waiting <coughs> and shared the lunch with them. Uh, good fish and chips. Oh, it was just done just right. It's seafood processing right next door. Hyder General Store. Lots of interesting buildings. This one here, the house was built up above. I would say it's probably for bear proof. <laughs> the local bar looked like it was still active. Okay, up the road about six miles is Fish Creek with the bear viewing platform when the salmon are running. When the salmon are running, that stream is filled with grizzlies and brown bear, Alaska brown bear, black bear, eating on the salmon, gorging themselves, getting ready for the winter. They have lots of visitor guidelines on how to react, but you know what? They don't know how to deal with my son. Here's Kate. Kate rode two and a half hours that morning to do the first 21 miles on that road. And the last 15 or so were pretty steep, pretty rugged. So she's one tough old gal. I shouldn't say old, she'd be offended. This is one of the glaciers you see going up the road over in the distance. Okay, here is Ted Truman. He tread with, Ted was from Withers, B.C., the same place Kate was. And he was, he's 80 now, but he told us that in his early 20s, he was surveyor on the roads and the mine projects up there in the tunnels. It was his first visit back. There you kind of get a little glimpse of how big Salmon Glacier is. Here's a little bit more of it. We're going to fill you in and give you some better views as you see how the glacier comes down and sweeps around and heads down the canyon. I know you're bored with these still pictures, but here in a little bit I'll fire up the drone and you'll have some video. We'll go a little faster. This is the head end of it where the backflow is, and there's actually lakes in there during the summertime. And they say by the end of the summer the lakes are all gone. But that gives you the backflow, and then you see where it flows down out of the mountains, makes a turn, and heads down. It's just, just huge. And you see the little parking lot down below there, that's where I was flying from. Just, here you go. Okay, now, just to give you an idea. On this little flight here, my drone was going 30 miles an hour. And I speeded it up 3x, so effectively we're traveling 90 miles an hour over this glacier. It doesn't look like we're hardly moving, does it? It's just huge. Just solid ice and just beautiful. If I shut up, you can just enjoy the scenery. Here we'll go up to where it flows out from. And I don't know how far up there it comes from. I should have done the research on Salmon Glacier, but you're welcome to. I mean, the Internet's a wonderful resource. It'll tell you all about it. But it just, just being there was just out of this world. We had to be in uh, Prince George that night, but my son and I, we took our time and we didn't leave here until nearly two o'clock in the afternoon so it was right at midnight when we rolled into Prince George lots of blue ice just 
how many thousands of years has that been there? I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have sharing it with you. We'll take one more quick look around here. You can see we're gonna we're gonna see where we were standing here shortly, and it's we're pretty small compared to the the immenseness. Alaska was just one gorgeous street. So was the Yukon and the Klondike area. Need to go back and spend more time there. <laughs> there you see land popping into view. So I was trying to bring the drone in and I was actually trying to position so we could do a selfie with the drone. Not very stable there. Probably that bald-headed old man's getting kind of senile. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.